Thank you so much, Mwishmwarigade. We can be seated. Your Excellency, uh, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Mwishmwa Msalia Mudavadi, Mwishmwa Wetangula, all the members of parliament here, all the leaders, our fathers of faith, the clergy seated here today. Good morning. Um, first of all, allow me to thank the Almighty God because of His goodness and His mercies that are new every morning. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of God. And we want to thank God this morning because our steps have been ordered to this place, as we have said, the 5th of May of 2022. I want to thank my sister, uh, Dr. Dorcas Rigade, for making this meeting possible. Thank you so much, my sister. May the Lord bless you for the good work that you are doing, for championing the work of God in our nation. Let me also take this opportunity to welcome all of you to our home, uh, the Hustlers Mansion. Karibu Nisana. I know you have traveled from far and wide. Uh, I heard the counties being called, and uh, let me say karibuni sana. Uh, this morning, I want to give you a testimony. Say amen. Um, uh, let me just go to the Bible. Let me give you a testimony that happened to us as a family, a few about a week ago. So this is what happened. In 2018, I was invited to go to speak during International Women's Day in uh, um, Etihad, with the Etihad women, the airline Etihad. So they invited me to go speak to their women on International Women's Day. So that was March of 2018. So when I was coming back home, I was on Emirates, and it was a day flight. So I decided to read my Bible because when you're in a day flight, you can't sleep. So I decided to read my Bible. And I started reading about barrenness and the women in the Bible that were barren. And so I read about Sarah, I read about Rachel, I read about Rebecca, I read about Leah, and what God did in their lives. So I continued reading my Bible, and I came across a city that was barren, and that is what I want to emphasize on this morning, just for a few minutes. Now, the Bible in the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verses um, 26, talks a city called Jericho. And this is what the Bible says. Um, the Bible says, at that time, Joshua invoked this curse. May the curse of the Lord fall on anyone who tries to rebuild the town of Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn son, he will lay his foundation. At the cost of his youngest son, he will set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua and his reputation spread throughout the Bible. I know we all know Jericho. We are talking to clergy. And you remember, they had Jericho, the city, had resisted the children of Israel when they were crossing to the promised land. And remember, after they brought Jericho down, Joshua invoked this curse upon the city of Jericho. A curse was put on Jericho. Now, let's look at the word of God in the book of... Um, uh, Uh, first Kings the reign of King Ahab that he yelled a man from Bethel rebuilt Jericho when he laid its foundation it cost him the life of his old son Abiram and when he completed it and set up its gates it cost him the life of his youngest son Segub this all happened according to the message from the Lord concerning Jericho spoken by Joshua, the son of Nun. 
So you see the curse coming to pass, isn't it? Now, let's look at the Bible in the book of uh, 2 Kings chapter 2. Now, this is about Elisha. This is what the Bible says in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, uh, verses 19. One day, the leaders of the town of Jericho visited Elisha. We have a problem, my Lord, they told him. This town is located in pleasant surroundings, as you can see, but the water is bad and the land is unproductive. Amen? Now, I related in my own interpretation, and maybe there are theologians here who can correct me, that this could have happened because of the curse that was invoked on Jericho by Joshua the son of Nun, that this city, the Bible says Jericho looked pleasant, it looked very good, but the water was bad, and the city was unproductive. Now the Bible says, Elisha said, bring me a new bowl with salt in it, so they brought it to him, then he went out to the spring that supplied the town with water, and threw the salt into it, and said, this is what the Lord says. I have purified this water. It will no longer cause death or infertility. And the water has remained pure ever since, just as Elisha said. Praise God. So when, I, when, I, when, when the Lord spoke to me about this uh, verse and uh, this story of Jericho in 2018, I remembered about our water here in Karen. I know there are many people who live in Karen, and uh, at least for us, where we live, we drilled a borehole in 2003. And when we drilled this borehole in 2003, uh, when the water was taken like for, to be checked uh, by, the, by, the, by the labs, they told us that we could not drink that water as it was until it was purified. So my husband, the deputy president, went into a venture and bought very expensive purifying machines. And that is what we have been doing, purifying the water all the time before we, we, we can drink it or before we can use it. And I kept wondering, because the water, you could actually see the impurities. It was very impure. Now we kept you know, changing the filters, the filtration and that kind of thing. But the Lord kept reminding me about uh, this uh, word that, uh, that El what Elisha did. And I kept wondering and saying, supposing I go pray for this water, is it possible for it to be purified? That is what I kept telling myself. Now, this is what has been happening since 2003. Now, recently, the purifying machines had gotten problem, and I remember we spent a lot of money to buy. And I had called my team from Eldred to come and do it for us. And just after one week, again, the water was not clean. And I remember my, our boy at the residence was getting very frustrated. Now, I kept wondering, am I worthy to do what Elisha did just to go pray for this water? But then I kept thinking, maybe I need a pastor. Maybe I need a prophet. Maybe I need somebody else. And the Lord just kept reminding me about that. Now, on Wednesday, tell somebody Wednesday. Wednesday. On Wednesday, the other Wednesday. Usually Wednesday is our day of prayer and fasting. So I went to the office for a meeting. Then I went for prayers. Then I thought, let me go to the residence and see what is happening. So when I got there, the Lord reminded me about that water. You know what I did? I went to the kitchen, took a bowl, put salt, and went to the borehole. And I went and decreed the words of Elisha. I went and said, this water will never be dirty again. And I spread the water around the borehole. And actually it was about to rain. It was about to rain. So I ran quickly and went to the house. And then of course I did whatever I needed to do. I came back home here. On Thursday, I went very shortly, and then um, I came back home here. On Friday, I went to the residence, uh, the other side. So I had some guests there, and I saw 
the water was looking different. So I waited when the guests had left. I called the boy. I was like, Shadrach, what happened to the water? He told me, Mom, I don't know what happened to the water. The water is now clean. Amen? And you know, <laughs> this is what he told me. He told me yesterday on Thursday, I had to call the other boys and whoever was in the compound to come and tell them, come and see. I don't know what happened to the water. And he told me something. He told me, mom, I'm not even taking the water through the purification machine. I'm just um, pumping it from the borehole to the, to the tank. And we started giving God thanks. <laughs> Yesterday I was there. The water is still clean. Why am I saying this today? I want to give all the glory and honor to God. And to say that there is nothing that God cannot change. Amen? There is nothing that God cannot change. Thank you for coming here this morning. And I know sometimes as men of God, there's a lot of expectations of you. We come to you for everything. When we have problems in our homes, we come to you. When we have problems in everything, we come to you. We come to you for prayers. Sometimes we forget that you are also human and that you also need God to come through for you. I want to decree today and declare because of what God did for Jericho, because of what God did to our water here in Karen, the Lord is going to change your situation in whatever way. And as I sat here this morning, I know as a church and as the clergy, as men of God, you have gone through unprecedented times, especially post-COVID. I know some churches have downsized. Some churches maybe have had to close. Some churches have had to go rethink again. But I want to say, God is doing something new in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that is not pure, God is purifying. Your churches will never be the same again. And thank you for coming to pray with us today because you have the country of Kenya at heart. Allow me to say thank you so much for praying for us. Thank you so much for praying for the deputy president. Thank you so much for praying for the city of Nairobi and even for this nation. As we go to the elections, I know God is going to do us good. As Mam Lucy was talking here about the mothers, God has been reminding me that for a mother who is carrying a baby, the last trimester is the most important. The last three months, anything could happen. You could lose that child because of something very small. But I want to say that God is allowing us these three months, May, June, July, to continue to push in prayer, to continue to push in his word, so that indeed Kenya can get the president that God desires. So thank you so much. I shared that testimony just to tell you that there is nothing that is impossible to God. And as you go home, some of the things that you have wanted to do, and maybe even as a man of God you've been doubting, go do, and you will have a testimony because God is going to do it for us. Thank you so much. God bless you.